I am asking that if you can, to please help to financially support this ministry. If you feel led to pledge any amount of money, it would be extremely helpful and greatly appreciated. There is a PayPal link in the description box and in my pinned comment below. You can also donate using Cash App. My cash tag is dollar sign watchman 1963. Thank you all so much for your prayers and support. God bless. Welcome to the Watchman YouTube channel. This channel is all about world news and Bible prophecy, pointing to the soon return of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We have that big announcement from an Oscar-nominated actor known for Juno and Umbrella Academy announcing he is transgender. Elliot Page came out publicly with a post about his identity, saying his joy is real but fragile. Janae Norman joins us with so much more. Good morning, Janae. Robin, good morning. You know, it was that line in particular that I thought was so poignant. This star who we've all known and loved for years writing, despite feeling profoundly happy, I'm also scared. Paige bravely making that powerful announcement while also calling attention to the staggering statistics about the violence trans people face. This way. This morning, a Hollywood star sharing a powerful message. Elliot Page announcing he's transgender, writing, I want to share with you that I'm trans. My pronouns are he, they, and my name is Elliot. Because you're like the coolest person I've ever met. And, and you don't even have to try. Page, formerly known by the name Ellen, shot to stardom more than a decade ago in his Oscar-nominated role as a snarky pregnant teen in Juno. Yeah, I'm a legend, you know? They call me the cautionary whale. Now, the 33-year-old actor says he is profoundly happy, writing, I can't begin to express how remarkable it feels to finally love who I am enough to pursue my authentic self. Look, I didn't know who I was, but I do now. Page is now starring in The Umbrella Academy, which was just renewed for a third season. I don't want to hurt you. <laughs> Netflix, which airs the show, responding to the announcement on Twitter, writing, so proud of our superhero. We love you, Elliot. We're going to see him play totally new characters now. And what's most exciting is that they're going to be the ones that he truly feels fit him, you know, the, the ones that he was born to play, not that Hollywood wanted him to play. In recent years, trans visibility has expanded in Hollywood. Actress Laverne Cox starring in Orange is the New Black, Olympian Caitlyn Jenner introducing herself on the cover of Vanity Fair, and the hugely popular show Pose, which centers on trans characters racking up Emmy nods. But there's still a long way to go. For those living their truth, coming out as trans can be dangerous. According to the Human Rights Campaign, at least 40 trans and non-binary people have been murdered this year alone, the majority being trans women of color. Page revealing he's scared of the hate, citing the staggering discrimination and violence trans people face, writing, to all trans people who deal with harassment, self-loathing, abuse, and the threat of violence every day, I see you, I love you, and I will do everything I can to change this world for the better. Page publicly came out as gay in 2014 and has long been a supporter of LGBTQ plus rights. There are pervasive stereotypes about masculinity and femininity that define how we're all supposed to act, dress, and speak, and they serve no one. Anyone who defies these so-called norms becomes worthy of comment and scrutiny. Page now celebrating his identity, supported by his wife, Emma Portner, who wrote on Instagram, I am so proud of Elliot Page. Elliot's existence is a gift in and of itself. Shine on, sweetie. Love you so much. And talk show host Ellen DeGeneres tweeting, sending love to my friend. You inspire me with your strength, courage, and honesty. When somebody like Elliot Page that people have respected and admired for years, tells them that he's a transgender person, it helps them understand a little bit more about it, what it means to be trans and helps them realize that they are going to be meeting transgender people in their real life in the future. 
And in that post now liked nearly two and a half million times, Elliot pointing out that within the trans community, 40% of trans adults report attempting suicide. That number almost makes your heart stop. But he adds, the more I hold myself close and fully embrace who I am, the more I dream, the more my heart grows, and the more I thrive. And guys, that's what we love to see. Yes, he is going to help so many. Janae, thank you so much. To love who I am. To hear him say that, Elliot say that, to love who I am. And there's so many who can relate to that mm -hmm. and who don't. And now will have perhaps a courage we'll to do so too. Make a difference. So. Being transgender is at odds with science and God's design as we read in Genesis 126 and 27. Then God said, let us make man in our image, according to our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over the cattle over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God he created him. Male and female he created them. Somehow, in some mysterious and wonderful way, the human male and female, in both body and spirit, are the image and likeness of God. Satan hates mankind because we are created in God's image. He is sowing confusion in the minds of our children. And he is busy in these last days devouring those who are not steadfast in the faith, as we read in 1 Peter 5, 8 through 11. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil walks about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. Resist him, steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same sufferings are experienced by your brotherhood in the world. But may the God of all grace, who called us to his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after you have suffered a while, perfect, establish, strengthen, and settle you. To him be the glory and the dominion forever and ever. Amen. Joe Biden said that on his first day of office, he will give transgender students access to sports, bathrooms, and locker rooms in accordance with their gender identity in all federally funded schools. Do you think he has the ability to do this, and do you agree with this decision? I agree with the decision, and I know he'll check things out thoroughly legally. At one point, an activist told Joe Biden that she's got an eight-year-old transgender daughter, eight years old, a second grader. She asked Joe Biden what he thought about that. Here's how he responded. The idea that an eight-year-old child or a 10-year-old child decides, you know, I decided I want to be transgender. That's what I think I'd like to be. It may make my life a lot easier. There should be zero discrimination. And what's happening is too many transgender women of color are being murdered. They're being murdered. I mean, I think it's up to now 17. Don't hold me to that number. So if an eight-year-old biological boy decides one day that he's really a girl, that's final. And you'd have to be a bigot to pause and say, wait a minute, you're eight years old, you're a small child. Maybe let's think about this for a minute. That's what a normal person who has kids would say. People with kids know that children grow and change. They change their minds about a lot of things, including themselves. That's the reality of it. But if you're a crazed ideologue, you don't care about reality. So you would tell the rest of us that an eight-year-old is entitled to hormone therapy on demand and permanent life-altering surgery if he slash she demands it. That's what Biden is telling us. It doesn't matter how fashionable talk like this is right now, and it is very fashionable. It is crazy and it's destructive and it's having a profound effect. No one wants to say it, but it's true. We know that between 2016 and 2017, the number of gender surgeries for biological females in this country quadrupled in one year. We also know that many people who get those surgeries regret them later, deeply regret them. We have a lot more data on that, but act universities are actively punishing researchers who follow that line of inquiry. So much for science. In the end, mania like this will end. The left is at war with nature. Inevitably, they will lose that war because nature always prevails. But in the meantime, so much damage, so many children being hurt irreparably. Biden doesn't care. It's the new thing. And so he's for it, whatever it takes. Question this segment, it comes from Mika Hack. She's from uh, State College, Pennsylvania. This is your first presidential election that you're voting. Yes. Hi, Mika. How are you? Um, I'm good. Thank you. Um, I'm the proud mom of two girls, eight and ten. My youngest daughter is transgender. The Trump administration has attacked the rights of transgender people, banning them from military service, 
um, weakening non-discrimination protections and even removing the word transgender from some government websites. How will you, as president, reverse this dangerous and discriminatory agenda and ensure that the lives and rights of LGBTQ people are protected under U.S. law? I will flat out just change the law. Every, eliminate those executive orders, number one. You may recall, I'm the guy who said, uh, I was raised by a man who uh, I remember I was being dropped off. My, my, my dad was a high school educated, well-read man who uh, was a really decent guy. And I was being dropped off to get, get an application in the center of our city, Wilmington, Delaware, the corporate capital of the world at the time. And these two men, I'm getting out to get a, an application to be a lifeguard in the African-American community because there was a big swimming pool complex. And, uh, and these two men, well-dressed, leaned up and hugged one another and kissed one another. And I'm getting out of the car at the light, and I turn to my dad. My dad looked at me and said, Joey, it's simple. They love each other. The idea that an eight-year-old child or a ten-year-old child decides, you know, I decided I want to be transgender. That's what I think I'd like to be. It may make my life a lot easier. There should be zero discrimination. And what's happening is too many transgender women of color are being murdered. They're being murdered. I mean, I think it's up to now 17. Don't hold me to that number, but it's it's it's, incre it's, it's higher now. Yeah. And that's just this year. And so I promise you, there is no reason to suggest that there should be any right denied your daughter or daughters, whichever if one or two, one. one your daughter, that your other daughter has a right to be and do none, zero. And by the way, my son Bo passed away, was the Attorney General of the State of Delaware. He was the guy who got the first transgender law passed in the State of Delaware and uh, because of a young man who became a woman uh, who uh, worked for him in the Attorney General's office. We now live in an Isaiah 520 world where evil is good and good is evil, where the sin of being a homosexual or transgender is openly celebrated and even glorified. One of the many signs that we are living in the end times is the epidemic of homosexuality that is sweeping the world today. Jesus said he would return at a time when society parallels the days of Lot, as we read in Luke 17, 28 through 30. Likewise, as it was also in the days of Lot, they ate, they drank, they bought, they sold, they planted, they built. But on the day that Lot went out of Sodom, it rained fire and brimstone from heaven and destroyed them all. Even so will it be in the day when the Son of Man is revealed. To find out what parallels our days with the days of Lot, we need to go back to the book of Genesis. Genesis 19, 1-5 Now the two angels came to Sodom in the evening, and Lot was sitting in the gate of Sodom. When Lot saw them, he rose to meet them, and he bowed himself with his face toward the ground, and said, My lords, please turn aside to your servant's house and spend the night and wash your feet. Then you may rise up early and go on your way. They said, No, we will spend the night in the town square. But he pressed them strongly, so they turned aside to him and entered his house. And he made them a feast, and baked unleavened bread, and they ate. But before they lay down, the men of the city, the men of Sodom, both young and old, all the people to the last man, surrounded the house. And they called to Lot, Where are the men who came to you tonight? Bring them out to us, that we may know them. The term know them isn't a friendly handshake and how are you. It is to know them in a sexual way. What parallels our days with the days of Lot is homosexuality. Just as in the days of Lot, not only is homosexuality widely accepted today, but it's being taught to our kids, just like in Sodom, as we read in verse 4. The men of the city, the men of Sodom, both young and old, all the people to the last man, surrounded the house. There are many people within the church who are teaching that homosexuality is not a sin, when scripture clearly says it is. This is another sign Jesus gave to look for prior to his second coming, as we read in Matthew 24:11. Then many false prophets will rise up and deceive many. Homosexuality is strongly condemned in the Bible. Ezekiel 16.49-50 Look, this was the iniquity of your sister Sodom. She and her daughter had pride, fullness of food, and an abundance of idleness. Neither did she strengthen the hand of the poor and needy. And they were haughty and committed abomination before me. Therefore I took them away as I saw fit. What was this prideful abomination committed before God? The answer is found in the book of Leviticus. Leviticus 18.22 You shall not lie with a male as with a woman. It is an abomination. Leviticus 20.13 If a man lies with a male as he lies with a woman, 
Both of them have committed an abomination. They shall surely be put to death. Their blood shall be upon them. God gives mankind a dire warning for the acts of homosexuality in 2 Peter 2.6 and turning the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah into ashes, condemn them to destruction, making them an example to those who afterward would live ungodly. God also offers forgiveness to those who are living a life of homosexuality as we read in 1 Corinthians 6, 9 through 11. Or do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor homosexuals, nor thieves, nor the covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor swindlers, will inherit the kingdom of God. And such were some of you, but you were washed, but you were sanctified, but you were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our God. Good morning. Good morning. Today we choose to recognize, honor, love, and celebrate anyone here who would claim their identity publicly as lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, queer, or questioning, intersex, pansexual, asexual, or any category that I've left out. This is Phoenix. You're a little shy. Do you want to tell your mom if you're a boy or a girl? I just want to tell them that I'm a girl. Okay, you can tell them that. Okay. Phoenix would like you to know that she's a girl and she prefers she and her pronouns. This way. May you be well, safe, and whole. We honor you exactly as you are. As a sign of his coming and the end of the age, Jesus said there would be a falling away from the Christian faith, and false teachers would rise up, as we read in Matthew 24, 10 and 11. And then many will fall away and betray one another and hate one another, and many false prophets will arise and lead many astray. The Bible tells us these false prophets will twist God's word as we read in 2 Peter 3:15 and 16. And consider that the long-suffering of our Lord is salvation, as also our beloved brother Paul, according to the wisdom given to him, as written to you, as also in all his epistles, speaking in them of these things, and which are some things hard to understand, which untaught and unstable people twist to their own destruction, as they do also the rest of the scriptures. The Bible goes on to tell us that these false teachers are Satan's servants, as we read in 2 Corinthians 11, 14, and 15. For such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into apostles of Christ. And no wonder, for even Satan disguises himself as an angel of light. So it is no surprise if his servants also disguise themselves as servants of righteousness. Their end will correspond to their deeds. The last days church will not follow the truth in the Bible. They will find false teachers to tell them their sin is okay. And not just that it is okay, but it is biblical, as we read in 2 Timothy 4, 3 and 4. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but wanting to have their ears tickled, they will accumulate for themselves teachers in accordance to their own desires, and will turn away their ears from the truth, and will turn aside to myths. This is what last day's Christianity looks like. It is a Christianity that says there are many paths to heaven. When the Bible clearly says, Jesus Christ is the only way. It is a Christianity that approves of homosexuality, fornication. If you are having sex and you are not married, it's not called dating, it's called fornication. And abortion, even though God says these things are sin, it is a Christianity that in its church services look just like the world. Jesus goes on to tell us the last day's church will be such a worldly, Christ-rejecting church that he has been thrown out as we read in Revelation 3, 14 through 22. And to the angel of the church of the Laodiceans write, These things, says the Amen, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. I know your works, that you are neither cold nor hot. I could wish you were cold or hot. So then, because you are lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will vomit you out of my mouth. Because you say, I am rich, have become wealthy, and have need of nothing, and do not know that you are wretched, miserable, poor, blind, and naked. I counsel you to buy from me gold, refined in the fire, that you may be rich, and white garments, 
that you may be clothed, that the shame of your nakedness may not be revealed, and anoint your eyes with eye salve, that you may see. As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten, therefore be zealous and repent. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come into him and dine with him, and he with me. To him who overcomes, I will grant to sit with me on my throne, as I also overcame and sat down with my father on his throne. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. In these verses of Scripture, Jesus is talking about the last day's lukewarm church, a church that has one foot in the world and one foot in the church. This church is so disgustingly lukewarm that Jesus vomits it out of his mouth. Jesus counsels the last day's church to buy from him gold, which is purity, white garments, which is righteousness, and I salve, which is truth. These three things can only come from the purity, righteousness, and truth that Jesus offers through salvation in him. Jesus is now standing outside the door of the last day's Laodicean church, offering salvation to anyone who will listen. This is the grace and mercy of God. He has been kicked out of his own church, and yet still knocks and offers salvation to anyone who hears his voice and opens the door. I implore you today, if you are not saved, or are a lukewarm Christian, to take up Jesus' offer of salvation that can only be received through him and only him. John 14.6 Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Joe Biden rushes to embrace UN and its globalist ambitions. Former Vice President Joe Biden spoke with UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres on Tuesday, promising a strengthened partnership on a host of issues from coronavirus to climate change. The UN Secretary General saying humankind is waging a war on nature. Antonio Guterres spoke to us here at CBS this morning ahead of a major address today that he's calling the state of the planet. And in a word, that state is broken, he says, citing man-made global warming. He's hoping to push the world toward a more ambitious program to address it. We spoke to him as part of Covering Climate Now, a collaboration of more than 400 news outlets worldwide dedicated to explaining the problem and the dangers of a warmer Earth. With our old familiar planet increasingly gone, burned and battered, melting in ways we've never experienced before, nearly 200 countries struck a deal to at least begin to address the problem of global warming. But while the Paris Agreement was ushered in with cheers, Five years later, it has not yet resulted in significant change. I would say the majority of the countries have not been able to fulfill their commitments made in Paris. Which is why United Nations Secretary General Antonio Guterres is now warning that the world's failure to act with urgency is not only dangerous, but suicidal. There is a growing conscience that the way we are moving is a suicide in relation to the future and to our future generations. So to take your metaphor, the world is on the ledge, and your job is to convince the world to step off of it rather than jump. It is true. As we speak here today, the United States is the only country to leave the Paris Agreement. We are not in it. How important was it for Joe Biden to have won the election in 2020? I think that the fact that the incoming administration has announced that they will again join the Paris Agreement and they will commit to net zero emissions in 2050 is absolutely crucial to rescue the planet. I understand that uh, in some uh, people in the United States there is uh, this idea uh, that uh, what makes sense is to have a policy more inward looking. It is my true belief that we all need to be cosmopolitan and uh, it is together that we can rescue our planet and improve the living conditions of everybody everywhere. Guterres has science on his side as he lays out the problem, predicting a planet forever marked by stronger storms, more frequent heat waves, and longer droughts. If the global average temperature rises by more than 1.5 degrees Celsius by the end of the century. Right now, we're headed for at least twice that increase. We are still in line with an increase of temperature of three to five degrees in the end of the century. That would be absolutely devastating for the world economy and for human life. Uh, so it's time for the war between humankind and nature to end. Why is humankind at war 
with nature? Well, because the logic of the economic development for a long time was a logic of exploitation of everything, of every resource available, without looking into the future, without looking into the limits. Historically, the bulk of the world's energy has come from oil, gas and coal, fuels that create greenhouse gas emissions which warm the planet. Finding a way to lower those emissions is the only way to stop global warming. The world's oil and gas companies have trillions of dollars of oil and gas that they know about, that they're waiting to dig up and to sell. Who is going to pay those companies to not dig it up and burn it? The value of companies in history changes with the changing conditions of the global economy. There was a cycle of oil as the key engine of the world economy. That cycle is finished. So the value of oil and gas companies will diminish as the value of coal companies is already diminishing. So I'm totally convinced that inevitably a lot of the oil and gas that is today in the soil will remain in the soil. So that last point is yeah. why President Trump would say that the Paris Agreement was a job killer. And what's interesting about uh, Guterres is he's acknowledging that, yeah, it's a job killer if you work for an oil and gas company, but it's a job creator on the yes. other side. I'm saying on the other hand. And really yeah. importantly, he's calling in this speech he's going to give today for a basic income, as he calls it, to help bridge people out of the old industry to something yeah. new. And that's a change. Talking about the economic pain and alleviating it is a key change over the last five years. Yeah, and most importantly, climate change, if you don't address it, is a job killer. Yes. It's an economic disaster. Yeah. That's why it's so important that we're having the conversation again. Yes. Very important. Yep. Events are happening faster than we can process them, yet nothing startles or amazes us much anymore. And we are watching an unsaved world rushing headlong into the tribulation, and they don't even know it. The world is baffled at the events taking place in the weather. And yet, it was foretold 2,000 years ago in Bible prophecy that this would happen. Satan, the great deceiver, often tries to front-run God by giving people wrong ideas ahead of time about what is prophesied to happen. Satan has tricked mankind into believing that climate change is real and in turn has blinded many people to the gospel of Jesus Christ, as we read in 2 Corinthians 4, 3 and 4. But even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing, whose minds the God of this age is blinded, who do not believe, lest the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine on them. Jesus said a sign of his return would be more frequent and more intense weather, as we read in Matthew 24, 7 and 8. And there will be famines, pestilences, and earthquakes in various places. All these are the beginning of birth pains. Pestilence is the Greek word loimus, which means a plague. The definition of a plague is any large-scale calamity, especially when thought to be sent by God. God has used plagues in the form of extreme weather in the past, and will again in the future. The seventh plague on Egypt was hail. Don't forget about the famine in Joseph's time. One of the biggest is the flood in the book of Genesis. In the future, during the seven year tribulation, God will once again use extreme weather in the form of pestilence as judgment. In Revelation 16, 21, God uses hailstones weighing 100 pounds each, and great hail from heaven fell upon men, each hailstone about the weight of a talent. Men blasphemed God because of the plague of the hail, since that plague was exceedingly great. In Revelation 16, 8, and 9, God uses scorching heat. Then the fourth angel poured out his bowl on the sun, and power was given to him to scorch men with fire. And men were scorched with great heat, and they blasphemed the name of God who has power over these plagues, and they did not repent and give him glory. Climate change is simply Satan's counter to Jesus' signs of his return and the end of the age. So when Jesus Christ warns us that just before his second coming, there will be famines, pestilences, and earthquakes in various places, you had better believe that these occurrences are a sign from God and that he is about to intervene. Don't let Satan blind you to the gospel of Jesus Christ. The extreme weather the world has been witnessing is not climate change. It is God letting us know our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, is returning. One day, Jesus is coming. You may be at church. You may be at work. You may be asleep. God grant that you will be ready when he makes his personal appearance. My God, what if his appearance occurs on a Sunday morning? My prophetic word to you this morning is get ready, get ready!
The signs of Jesus' soon return are so strong now, and the evidence is so clear that any person willing to accept the truth can see that the end of the world as we know it is near. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. But God demonstrates his own love toward us, and that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. That if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Jesus paid the price for mankind's sin. He has provided a way to spend eternity with him and the Father. All you have to do is believe in the Lord Jesus and you will be saved. God has already done all the work. All you must do is receive in faith the salvation God offers. Fully trust in Jesus alone as the payment for your sins. Believe in him and you will not perish. God is offering you salvation as a gift. All you have to do is accept it. Jesus is the only way of salvation. That being said, we must repent of our sins. While repentance is not a work that earns salvation, repentance unto salvation does result in works. It is impossible to truly and fully change your mind without that causing a change in action. In the Bible, repentance results in a change in behavior. Repentance, properly defined, is necessary for salvation. Biblical repentance is changing your mind about Jesus Christ and turning to God in faith for salvation. Turning from sin is not the definition of repentance, but it is one of the results of genuine, faith-based repentance towards the Lord Jesus Christ. Time is short. Accept Jesus today.